the spirit of justice is the spirit that isn't too certain that it's right. That was Judge Learned Hand said that. And uh, there's also the quote that says that knowledge is replacing a empty mind with an open one. And it's important for us to realize that no matter how much it seems like we know something, we really don't. We believe what we are told. And so most of our knowledge comes not from being able to actually know and verify the truth. It comes instead from picking a source that we think is accurate, that we think is trustworthy, and then taking what we're told from that source on faith. So if, if I said, how do you know that anyone landed on the moon? You'd say, well, um, because of course everyone knows that. Well, does everyone know that? How do they know that? N nobody really knows that except for the people who saw it happen. Very few people saw it happen. Now we do have some pictures and we have various things which would probably give us cause to believe that someone did land on the moon. I'm not one of those people who believes that the moon landing was totally fake. And yet if I was put on the spot and you said, tell me for sure, are you certain that the moon landing happened? I would have to say, no, I don't know that. I don't know that because I wasn't there. All I have to go off of is various sources, which I choose to trust the credibility of, to some degree, enough to conclude that the probability indicates that someone did set foot on the moon. But I don't know that. I don't know that because I wasn't there. And that objectivity is important because we live in a time of readily available information. Everybody thinks that they know the truth because all you have to do is Google it. All you have to do is type a couple buttons and you have Google and Wikipedia there and everything else in between. But do you really know that you can trust those things? If there was some incorrect information that was mixed in with all of the other things, would you know? No, you, you wouldn't. None of us would. And so there is risk that comes with the readily available abundance of knowledge. And that is, we start to believe that we actually have the ability to know more than we really have the ability to know. And it's true, we do have more access to knowledge than ever before. But it's also true that that's knowledge which, however verified it might be, is not verified by we ourselves as individuals. It's trusted by us. And so, it's not really, it's not verified. It's just, it's something that we, we take on faith. Maybe it's well-founded faith. Certainly there's times when we can see that there's contradictions. There's two different people that say two opposite things, and then you kind of have that evidence that it's not exactly, it's not exactly true. Because if you have two conflicting sources that are both reporting the opposite, you know somebody's lying. But then, another thing that's important to think about is you only know that if there's actually two different sources that are contradicting each other. If there's only one voice, and that one voice is in agreement, then why would you believe that it's wrong? And we live in a time when 
just as it's easy to disseminate and access information, it's also easy to manipulate information. So all of that being considered, we really ought to be quite careful about how quickly we believe something. When you figure that media companies, there's only a few of them that control a lot of the messaging that goes out into the world. It would be wise for us not to just assume that everything we see on the television, everything that appears in the news feed, that all of it is just automatically accurate. It would be wise for us to consider the possibility that sometimes, sometimes we're told things that are not true. And sometimes, whether deliberate or otherwise, we are deceived. It's important for us to know that, to accept that doesn't mean that we should be extremely suspicious of everything. It doesn't mean that either. And so there's a need for this middle ground where you trust enough to not be a total island. Not to be totally paranoid all the time. But you also are skeptical enough to know that things aren't just automatically true because a trusted source has told you that they are. And I think we, we start to miss that in our society. We like to think that maybe the, the things that we used to do and be that are perhaps negative things about our history we think we've moved past those things. We think that we're more evolved. But the truth is that genetically, spiritually, and in all general ways, we're not different. We're the same human beings that we were a few thousand years ago. We look back at old black and white pictures and we think that, you know, the world was in black and white at that time. But they were no different than we. So, if we can look back and we can see how easy it was for people a few hundred years ago to do things which were terrible and harmful and ignorant, and we think that we're somehow more evolved, that's, that is itself a risk. Because that same witch hunting willingness to believe anything, ignorance that would destroy innocent lives and eliminate people's liberties and live in ignorance and filth, that same capacity exists within us today. The only real difference or change is in our circumstances. So maybe there's something that we've found and tapped into and released a tool that gives us the ability to be better than what we used to be. But it's not probably our biology. It's not that we evolved in any particular way. So The knowledge of how flawed we are can be a very useful tool in avoiding the types of extremism and evil that we think we've evolved past. If you know that there's darkness inside you, then you're in a better position to control it, to curtail it, to eliminate it, than if you think that you're somehow above reproach. So don't be too certain that you're right. Don't be too certain that the things you're told are right. Be thoughtful and willing to question things and be willing to throw out your most cherished beliefs if evidence 
makes itself manifest that you are wrong. And yet also, we should find strength in unity and tradition. We shouldn't seek to achieve progress by destroying everything from the past. Life is filled with paradoxes. It's filled with conflicts and contradictions, which we have to learn to accept and make the most of if we're going to be the best we possibly can. Boredom and excitement, individualism and a need to submit to something greater than ourselves, a need to trust on faith while also always questioning and it's always a work in progress but I do think there's a God complex that exists in a lot of people that desire to believe you know I'm better than others I'm different and that's very dangerous because power does corrupt people. There's nothing worse than someone who wants to make a positive difference in the world and wants absolute power so that they can do it. Because corruption can't see itself. Corrupt people always have a reason for what they do. They always have a rationale. They'll lie, and they'll lie because it's in the greater good. It's do a little bit of bad so that you can achieve something that's necessary. And that willingness to justify things and to not question has cost a lot of people their lives throughout history. It's been the basis for genocide and cruelty and torture and all sorts of awful things that people have done. It's that belief that, you know, I'm somehow better, I'm more enlightened, and we have to do something that's wrong so that we can achieve something that's necessary. Conviction is also important. And that's where most people go wrong, because most people sell out at some point. I've also thought about selling out and, and how... You know, if you think that you're not really better than anybody else, like if you assume that everyone has a point where they'll probably break, where they'll sell out, where they'll, where they'll do the wrong thing just to preserve themselves, then I guess the best thing you can do to keep yourself from being that person is to avoid putting yourself in a position where you have to make a decision that isn't the right one. It's like, if I said, would you steal so that your child wouldn't starve to death? Would you steal some food? And you'd probably say, well, yes, because I value the life of my child more than I value the moral social contract of not stealing. So I would steal, and I would say that it's right to steal for the purpose of saving a life. And you might be right, but here's the other side of it, and that is before you ever get to the point where you have to make that decision, have you done everything in your power to avoid being in the position where you have to make that decision? Because mm -hmm. If you save your money and you are a good steward of all the resources you have and you're, you're doing everything you possibly can to do what's right all along, then there's less of a chance that you're going to be in that situation where you have to make the decision between saving a life and being a thief. And that's where a lot of people go wrong. They think about this extreme situation, but they don't really focus 
on the everyday application of just not putting yourself in a position where you're going to be tempted or faced with a no-win situation. That's true of questioning things. It's true of lifestyle. If you do the right thing every day, you're less likely to be in a situation down the road where you can't afford to do the right thing. So be honest today so that you don't have to be dishonest tomorrow. Be a critical thinker today so that you aren't deceived in the future. And accept that you aren't perfect so that you don't fall into the trap of thinking that you're somehow so enlightened that you're beyond reproach. So till next time, thank you for watching. Goodbye.